near future where magic is militarized, an American soldier is forced to go rogue and must face the possibility that his country and its leaders may have gone too far. In Control Point, the first volume in the Shadow Ops trilogy by Mike Cole, and that's the book I'm reviewing on this episode of SFF 180. Hello everybody, TMW here once again as always, and this time with Wink, my little XO. She hasn't been in a video for some time, so here she is. Anyway, in the comics medium, the superhero genre, superhero stories, initially served mainly as adolescent power fantasies, providing an enjoyable, if thematically shallow and unsophisticated exercise in pure escapism. It wasn't really until the latter decades of the 20th century when more adventurous comics writers began to explore in a more dark and thoughtful way the, the ramifications of a world in which superpower-wielding people, uh, or in, any kind of being, actually existed. Military veteran Mike Cole brings his own perspective to the superhero premise, and offers a scenario that, frankly, is one of the very few I've found to be completely believable. To wit, if there were superheroes, they would immediately be brought under government control and their powers militarized. And speaking of superpowers, I think you want to go and wield yours against the dogs, so off you go. Now, Mike Cole's characters aren't really superheroes in the traditional Stan Lee, Jack Kirby sense, but it's pretty much the same thing. An event called the Great Reawakening has caused people around the world, around the country, to become latent, manifesting specific magical powers, more or less without warning. Now, some of these powers are perfectly legal, others have been declared illegal, but, for the most part, people who end up as latents are absorbed into the SOC, the Supernatural Operations Corps, that serves all branches of the U.S. military jointly. Now, some citizens who become latents, and also known as probes, attempt to go on the lam, fleeing government authority. They are declared selfers, and they are ruthlessly hunted down as fugitives. Now, Lieutenant Oscar Britton is an SOC officer who unexpectedly turns up latent after a rather ugly mission rounding up a couple of teenage selfers at a high school. It's a scene that is rather startlingly reminiscent of various scenes of school shootings and violence and mayhem that we've seen all too frequently in the news. Now, not having much reason to trust his superiors as a result of the outcome of this mission, Britain goes on the run, which gives Control Point an opening 65 pages or so that locked down Mike Cole's reputation as an action writer of the first caliber. Cole very confidently establishes himself as one of the most adrenalizing action writers to enter the genre in many years. Anyway, Britton is eventually caught, and with an explosive implanted in his chest to keep him in line, he is conscripted into working for Intertech, a government contractor that has established a base on the homeworld that is the source of this magic. Now, Cole here presents a rather uncharacteristically critical and cynical portrayal of U.S. military policy. Whereas so much military SF is unabashedly flag-waving and jingoistic with black-and-white moral clarity as to who the good guys are and who the bad guys are, Control Point can partially be read as a scathing indictment of how the military and corporate interests can align through politics. The magic of the source world is a lot like any other country that might happen to have some wonderful natural resource that we've decided we want. Oh, you have this stuff. Great. Looks like you could use a little freedom. A few of the natives of this world have allied themselves with us, probably because the alternative would be get slaughtered, but uh, still, regardless, they are treated and subjected to xenophobic bigotry and abuse all the same. This whole theme of othering and marginalizing people who are different than us, uh, essentially forcing them to adopt a criminal identity that they wouldn't really choose for themselves, is, is at the heart of Cole's story here. Now, throughout Control Point, action and conflict are never less than riveting, but if the book can be said to have any flaws, and pretty much any book can, it's that eventually the levels of violence and mayhem become so excessive in the book's climactic chapters that uh, it all kind of overwhelms the book's really interesting ideas, of which it offers a great many. Also, Oscar Britton, while he is a very admirably conflicted character, and I also like the fact that he's a person of color, he still, he's very compulsive, and he often acts irrationally and out of just sheer emotion, And when you think that his training would allow a cooler head to prevail. For instance, towards the end of the book, Britain commits one painfully and very obviously stupid act 
uh, for no obvious reason other than to fill the needs of an increasingly complex plot. Now, it's clearly something that he should have known better than to do, but Mike Cole has him do it anyway. Also, a few other nitpicks. Uh, there is one character who is one of the indigenous natives who befriends Britain. His name is Marty. It was very, very difficult for me to read the scenes with Marty in them and not be visualizing Dobby the house elf from the Harry Potter movies. I don't Maybe that's just kind of some sort of cultural assimilation that is my own fault, but that was the visualization I got. So, all right, caught you, you little troublemaker. But anyway, all of that notwithstanding, this is an extraordinarily assured debut. It is written not only with a really strong command of what makes for excellent entertainment value, but with much confidence and intelligence in terms of offering its readers genuine food for thought. The Shadow Ops trilogy marks an exceptional paperback debut for a writer who is certain to go on to many bigger and better things. Okay, everybody, keep an eye on the channel because the next two volumes in the trilogy, Fortress Frontier and Breach Zone, are going to be reviewed in pretty rapid succession, so keep an eye out for those. But otherwise, that's all I've got for this episode of SFF 180. Thank you so much for joining me. Remember, the most important thing, these are reviews. You will not always agree with me. I mean, she doesn't. Uh, but all the same, if you enjoyed watching, please leave a like, share the video with your SFF reading friends, and above all, subscribe to the channel to help it grow. I really appreciate that very much. So until I see all of you next time, happy reading.